So I get asked a lot on what I would like to see change for this game, and I thought why not make a video so that when someone asks I can just link them to you know some of the characters I'd like to see buffed or nerfed. Now getting into it, two of the characters that are complained about the most so far are Aquaman and Black Adam. And for Black Adam, one of the small tweaks I'd do is I would reduce his damage slightly so he's not doing close to 50% off a lot of hits or almost every conversion. Another change I'd give Black Adam is whenever he uses his trait, I would make it so his trait cannot kill you uh, from a round or last hit. It would just make it so your health drops down to the lowest possible value, which would be 0.01. And that would make it so literally anything could kill you afterwards. You could literally do a down one. If you block it, you die because you can't take any kind of damage. And he'd still have ways to chip you. He'd still have his lightning, his cloud, and of course his dive kick to chip you anywhere on the screen if you have 1% health left. And my final change for Black Adam would be whenever he whiffs a dive kick in front of you or you know, does an EX dive kick. For some reason, when he lands on the ground, he's considered airborne still. So some characters can't get really good punishes off him because of that. So I would make it so his recovery state off a dive kick whiffing it would not make him airborne. It would keep him on the ground. That way characters can get full combo punishes clean on him. Now for Aquaman, one of the changes I'd like to see is his From the Deep. I'd make it so he has to control and place where he wants to put it instead of it automatically tracking the opponent no matter where they are. I'd give him probably four or five different versions of it. One that would be up close, which you know you could do down back two then hold back to do up close one. The one from sweep would be the regular one. The one further away would be, you know, down back two forward and then the one full screen would be down back two up. Something like that. That way it wouldn't really be a nerf because this tool would still be very good. It's just be a way to, you know, introduce a little bit more skill and make it require a little bit more effort to use a top tier character. I don't say anything wrong with that. Another change I'd give to Aquaman is his string, back one, two, three, this one that's plus two on block. I would remove the block advantage from the string and just make it minus. And possibly for final change, I would remove any kind of invincibility off his Trident Rush wake up, that way he's forced to use his other moves like his scoop or his water shield as a wake up. That way it's not just, you know, completely repetitive where Aquamans are literally always waking up with Trident Rush and constantly using this move over and over for a lot of areas on the character. So that's that's what I would do to Aquaman. Now for some of the changes to Batman, one one of the things I'd do is I'd let instead of him starting with three bats, I'd let him just start with one bat in the beginning. That way he has to recharge a little bit to get all three of his bats out at the same time. And I'd also make his mechanical bats, the trait, not do any chip on block. So right now they do a little bit of chip. I would remove the chip on it. That way, when you're playing a match with him, and I see this more often than not, characters will get chipped out and killed by one of his mechanical bats, which I think, you know, removing that wouldn't be too much of a nerf, but it would, you know, allow it so he can't get guaranteed kills almost on a lot of characters just by, you know, zoning and then releasing a bat and forcing them to block it and then killing them. So those are the... Uh, two tweaks I do to Batman and also I'd remove the ability whenever you tech a throw from Batman from him using his mechanical bats to get a combo off so if Batman has bats out and he goes to grab you and you tech it I would just make the bats disappear that way he can't full combo you after that moving on to Catwoman one of the changes I do for her is her jump too I'd make it so it doesn't go as far as it does right now I'd just change the angle for it to go a little bit downward so the reach on it would be reduced Kind of like what NRS did for Alien in, in MKX uh, with his jump 2. Alien had a jump 2 that hit pretty far. It hit like almost sweep off distance and a lot of characters couldn't do much about it if it was spaced. So what they did was they angled it a little bit downward. So it was still a very good jump and it just couldn't be abused to the extent that it was. Another change for Catwoman is I would make her back 3 on recovery frames. Where you whiff it and then she's getting up like that. I would increase the hurt box on it. So if you whiff it back through with Catwoman on her recovery frames, your hurt box would be increased so you can't low profile any punishment or counter moves. So a lot of characters would, would be able to whiff punish you properly for misplacing a back three. And my final change for Catwoman would be her meter burn cat dash full screen. I just make it a little bit more unsafe on block, that way a lot of characters 
could get a cleaner punish on it because it is a full screen advancing two hitting armor launcher attack. I think it being a little bit more minus on block and being prone to clean full combo punishes by every character would be reasonable change. Alright so for Atrocitus, I'd make it so his trait Dexter does not regenerate at all between rounds. That would be one of the nerfs I'd give him. Similar to Black Canary, if he uses his Dexter trait to kill you or round or you kill him with it out, I would make it so it doesn't regenerate between rounds. I would also make it so when he has Dexter out and he throws you, uh, Dexter would be disabled from doing anything until you hit the ground. That way he can't combo off certain throw interactables for huge damage and he can't combo you for hitting you with a throw regular, you know, in the corner or whatever, I just remove that option. And my final change for him would be when he has Dexter out and he does the blood wall this, it would just cost a little bit more trait, that's it. So that would be my changes to Atrocitus. For Deadshot, I'd make this string, this one, which I believe is called Triggered, I'd make the second hit a mid. That way instead of low overhead, it's just a low, low into mid. Second change would be for his meter burn rifle. I'd make it so the hits are all unclashable still, except for the last one. So if you get hit by meter burn rifle, you'd still have to take the damage from it, but you'd have the option to clash the last hit this time. Because right now this entire move is unclashable. So the last hit would be clashable. And my final change to dead shot would be this move, which is his wrist shot, his high shot. I would just make it build a tiny bit less meter. So right now it builds like almost two little ticks. As you can see in the bottom super meter, it builds almost little, two small little ticks of the bar. I would, I would reduce it to maybe just exactly one. So that way he builds a little bit less meter doing this. All right, so now we're getting into the non top tier characters. And some of the buffs I'd like to see for some of these characters is starting with Wonder Woman. I'd like to see her trait have full control over it. So for example, if you do something like back trait, you'd get one of her buffs. This could be the rope one. Four trait could be uh, the bracelet buff. Down trait would be another one. And then up trait would be a fourth one. And the neutral trait, just hitting it alone without any direction, would be her would give her her air dash flight. So she'd have full control over her trait. She has five different trait options and they'd all be, you know, a different angle on the D-pad. Hitting left in it would give you one, then right in one would give you one and so on. It'd be like that. And the neutral one would be her flight one. And I guess to compensate for the buff on that, I possibly uh, increase the cooldown a little bit. That way, you know, it doesn't have, she can't always almost permanently be in whichever buff she wants to be, it'd be a little bit Increase cooldown just to balance it a bit. For Supergirl, one of the things I'd give her is her close downward trait laser, which is this. I'd make this a lot faster. Instead of it being 20 something frames that it is now, I'd cut it up in half, probably make it 10 or so frames, so it'd be a very fast close shot laser. And up close on all on all of her strings and normals, it jail off all of them. So if she wants to be safe and remain gapless, she'd have to use a little bit of her trait to do the downward shot, which would be come out super quick, you know, around 10 frames or so, jail off everything, not leave a gap, uh, build her some meter, and leave her a minus two. She'd be completely safe, just at the expense of some of her trait. Now, Brainic, I don't believe he needs too much. One of the things I would like to see for him is a small buff increase to his walk speed, because the startup on his walk speed is pretty poor and matchups where you can't use his air mobility and move around and you're forced to be on the ground it can be pretty difficult to get anything going because of his big clunky hurt box size and him having slow ground movement so I just like to see a small improvement to maybe his start up on his walk speed or just his walk speed in general and a final other change I do is if you're doing this and if you hold this trait or not it still go away on block but if you have it so the trait goes away so the trait's coming out on the screen already and it's already on the screen and you block something it would still it would still proceed to go and it wouldn't go away on block so if you do one of his traits you happen to release it it's already coming on the screen and you block something i would make it stay if you hit him it still go away but if it's already on the screen and you happen to block like a projectile or something i'd make it stay on the screen all right so for swamp thing one of the things i want to see for swamp thing is i'd like to see his log go full screen it's a very slow projectile. It could be, you know, from mid-screen jump, you're pretty much dying. So I think his lock screen should just go 
a little bit further just so it goes all the way full screen. Another thing is I would give his trait a little bit better recovery because I think the recovery right now is a little too extreme for it. I think it's a, has a little bit more recovery than Dexstar and Dexstar is an infinitely better trait than this one. So reduce the recovery a little bit on this. And also the final buff I'd give him is when he does this, his EX down back 3 move where he summons a clone. I would make it so if you trade with any projectile move in the game and the clone grabs him, the clone would have him grab for a few seconds. So you can intentionally, let's say you're fighting a zoning character, getting zoned out, you could pick a spot to do this EX and then intentionally trade with them and then they'll be grabbed for a few seconds. You could, you know, dash up and combo them for that. And I think that would help him a little bit better against zoners and characters in general that seem to bully him in neutral. For Captain Cold, one of the things I want to see is his Ice Wall into EX. I think it should be completely, fully, 100% projectile immune from going to regular Ice Wall to meter immersion. I don't know why it's not fully projectile immune because the Ice Wall is literally there the entire time when he's doing regular to meter burn version. But just to show you guys, I'll show you that there's actually a gap where you can hit Captain Cold out of it for doing it. Yeah, see right there, I would remove that. I would make it so anytime he does Ice Wall into meter burn version, there's no a few frames of gaps where projectiles can just mysteriously go through the wall and hit you. I'd, I'd get rid of that and keep it 100% projectile immune. So you have no chance of getting stuffed out before the meter burn roll part comes out by a projectile attack. Another buff I'd give him is I'd make his level 1 trait, which is this one, the self buff. I'd also additionally give it to where he takes less chip from some projectile attacks. That way, against some characters where he can't reliably ant, uh, anti-zone with his ice wall, he'd have a little bit better protection against getting chipped out and getting completely mauled in the life lead department by losing chip. So I'd give him those two buffs to help him. That's my changes for this video guys. I'll have, I know I didn't go through every single character. I have a part two video with the remaining characters coming soon. Thank you guys for watching.